so much ma'am we are now in the last session of our day one without any further ado to introduce to us our fourth speaker let us all welcome with our virtual applause dr marilo Pididomo, schools division superintendent of butuan city good afternoon ma'am Yes, uh, love afternoon to everyone. I guess at this point in time, um, all the participants have already info overload. So before I'm going to introduce the next resource speaker, uh, kindly stretch your arms first, your legs, move a little bit, um, take a deep breath, don't be serious enough. Okay, so I uh, just would like to take this opportunity by wishing everyone good luck as she will be taking the English this coming July. No? Uh, remember, it's not that the exam is not actually definition of terms. The exam is actually application of the knowledge that we have learned here. Uh, it's more on uh, mga situational, no? situational analysis. Okay, so we're very happy that uh, we already had uh, three resource speakers and we'll have the last um, speaker this afternoon, of course. So, our resource speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Physics at Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology, last April 2022, and graduated with her master's degree last March 2013 in Master of Science Education in Physics at the same time, university. She is well known as technology savvy person and is a certified Google educator level one, level two. She was granted a series of scholarships as someone who enjoys learning. Among this is the scholarship for the international leaders in education program, a program of the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs of U.S. Department of State and implemented by the International Resource Exchange, or IREX, Philippine American Educational Foundation, Fulbright Philippines. She also earned short courses from Kent State University, USA, as follows. Fundamentals of Curriculum, Special Academic Seminar, and Professional Development, Technology Seminar, and Teaching Science in Early Years. With her expertise, she has been appointed as education Program Supervisor of the Department of Education, Caraga Region. So ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, let us all welcome our distinguished resource speaker with a virtual club. Please welcome Ma'am Marilyn Montero Verliarian, Education Program Supervisor with her topic focusing on teaching and learning. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, SPS, Ma'am Didoma, for that um, kind introduction. And um, my respect to our regional director, Maria Gemma, Vides uh, Maria, Maria Gemma Mercado Videsma, our Assistant Regional Director, Attorney Fiel Almendra, and to our um, 
supportive um, schools division superintendents no, from from the 12 SBOs of this regional out of this region as well as the um, assistant region assistant schools division superintendents um, my um, afternoon greetings also to everyone who are in this platform okay um, let me first um, show my screen I, I hope that I am coming in loud and clear to everyone. Um. Um, can I get a thumbs up if my presentation is already shown? on your screen. Thank you so much. Okay, so my topic is on focusing on teaching and learning. And early this morning, um, Sir Andrew Dubois has already um, walked us through of the the domains no, of the professional standards for, for school heads. Um, for my topic, I will be focusing on domain three, uh, focusing on teaching and learning. So under this domain, we have eight strands. Okay, namely, we have school-based review, contextualization, and implementation of learning standards. Then we have teaching standards and pedagogies, teacher performance feedback, learner achievement and other performance indicators, learning assessment, learning environment, career awareness, and opportunities. And um, we have the learner discipline. Okay, so let me just show you the how this... Uh, strands no, progresses from uh, as one moves from um, career stage one to career stage four. So I have highlighted some key terms and phrases to di distinguish which one is for career stage one, career stage two, career stage three, and career stage four. So under um, stage as uh, strand 3.1, which is the school based review, contextualization, and implementation of learning standards. Um, under career stage one, we have, um, I have highlighted the word demonstrate. So um, this requires um, basic knowledge no, that the, the career stage one school heads should be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the school-based review, contextualization, and implementation of learning standards. And as he or she goes from career stage one okay, to career stage two, he or she should be able to assist teachers now in the review of in the review contextualization and implementation. Okay, and then one uh, once he or she moves from um, career stage two to three, um, she or he should be able to work with teams. Okay, teams in the conduct of the review contextualization and implementation to assist teachers in making the curriculum relevant for learners and then once she goes or he goes from career stage three to four he should be able or he or she should be able to share exemplary practice okay in the review contextualization and implementation of the learning standards okay to effectively assist teachers in making the curriculum relevant for our learners, okay? And then we have for our stage 3.2, which as stand 3.2, sorry, we have the teaching standards and pedagogies. Still for career stage one, okay, um, uh, career stage one school heads should be able to dem demonstrate knowledge and understanding. And then in under career stage two, okay, he or she should be able to provide now technical assistance to teaching, uh, to teachers on teaching standards and pedagogies within and across areas to improve their teaching practice. Okay, and then under career stage three, he or she should be able to engage school personnel such as master teachers, head teachers, and department heads, you no, know, in providing technical assistance to teachers, and then once. Um, he or she reaches no, or reaches career stage four, he, sh he or she should be able to share exemplary practice okay, um, in providing technical assistance to our teachers. Okay? And then for stand 
Strands 3.3, which is the teacher performance feedback, okay, for career stage one, um, demonstrate uh, understanding on the use of the use of feedback obtained from learners, parents, and other stakeholders to help teachers improve performance. And then under career stage two, okay, she goes from demonstrating, only demonstration of understanding, Ending. So under this uh, career stage two, he or, or she should be able to use, you know, to obtain learners, the parents, and others, uh, uh, other stakeholders stake to help teacher their performance. Okay, under under stage three, um, the school head, you no, know, under this career stage should be able now to collaborate with the school in effectively using the validated feedback obtained from learners, parents, and other stakeholders to help teachers improve their performance. And then under career stage four, um, still exhibit exemplary skills in effectively using our validated feedback. Okay, and then for strand 3.4, um, which is learner achievement and other performance indicators under career stage one, um, set achievable and challenging learning outcomes to support learner achievement and attainment of other performance indicators. Now, when he, he or she goes to career stage two, he, should, he or she should be able to utilize learning outcomes in developing data interventions to maintain learner achievement and other performance indicators. And then under career Stage three, engage the wider school in the intervention to sustain their admin and attain armas indicators. Under career stage four, okay, he or she should be able not or fellow no, in at sustaining learner achievement and attaining other performance indicators to promote accountability and uh, accountability within and beyond school context. Then under strength, three point five learning assessment for stage one standing okay, of the learning assessment, which is an utilization, and then when it goes from career stage one to two, okay, so uh, under career uh, career stage, we will now technical assistance teachers, okay, in the in the in using our learning assessment tool strategies and results consistent with curriculum requirements to ensure for accountability. And then for providing tech strategy three, the school head should not be able to work with personnel okay, involved in evaluating uh, teachers' use of the learning assessment tools. And then under her career first stage five, a uh, career stage four, sorry, um, the school had to be able to reach a deep one baby view of, okay, and then for strap and three point six, uh, um, we have the learning in environment, okay, so under stage one, the learning environment, then under stage three. Uh, the school head now can engage the wider school community in maintaining a learner-friendly, inclusive, and healthy learning environment. And then in career stage four, okay, the school head should now be able to empower the wider school in promoting and sustaining learner-friendly, inclusive, and healthy learning environment. Okay? And then the seventh strand under this domain is career awareness and opportunity. Um, in this case, under career stage one, the school head should be able still to demonstrate knowledge and where she goes to career stage two, the school head should now be able to ensure integration of career awareness and opportunities in the provision of the learning experiences aligned with the curriculum. Okay, And then if the school head attains all the base competencies and reaches career stage three, he or she should not be able to undertake initiatives in integrating career awareness, 
and opportunities in the provision of learning experiences aligned with the curriculum. And then under career stage four, um, the school head should now be able to institu institutionalize integration of career awareness and opportunities into the school curriculum and other learning experiences. Okay, and the last strand, which is the learner discipline. Okay, under career stage one, the school head, um, career stage one school head should, not, uh, be, should be able to demonstrate knowledge and under, understanding of existing national and local policies related to learner discipline. And then under career stage two, um, the school head should be able to implement learner discipline policies that are developed collaboratively uh, that are developed collaboratively with stakeholders, including parents, school personnel, and the community. And then under career stage three, the school head should be able to ensure that learner discipline policies developed with stakeholders are integrated into uh, various school processes and are applied consistently at all times by all personnel at all levels. And then under career stage four, lead concerted efforts among stakeholders to develop and implement effective learning discipline policies to support student growth and school improvements. Okay, so I have just walked you through with how career stages progresses across our strands. No, um, there are while well, uh, there are um, descriptors that are highlighted for us to be able to distinguish which one is under career stage one, career stage two, career stage three, and career stage four. Okay, so it was also mentioned earlier that um, under this domain, we have uh, uh, Sir Angelo Oy was able to cite Deputy Order Number Twenty One, Series of Twenty Nineteen, to support you no know, our um, as our reference for. Hello. Yes, Hello. I, um, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Um, which part po was my my cut off? Hello. Okay, how about this one? Am I heard? Okay. Um, yes, so again. Uh, our references. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you so much. So again, um, earlier this morning, Sir Angelo provided us with a, a reference for for this particular domain, which is the Deputy Order Number Twenty One, Series of Twenty Nineteen, which is the policy guidelines on the K to Twelve Basic Education Program. So I might I have added two more, which is the Deputy Order Number Forty Two, Series of Twenty Sixteen, which is the policy guidelines on daily lesson preparations for the K-12 basic education program, and also the Deputy Order Number 35, Series of 2016, which is the Learning Action Set, as to K-12 basic education program, school-based continuing professional development strategy for the improvement of teaching and learning. Okay? Um, also, um, as mentioned earlier, the, the PPSSH, Okay, was um, uh, was um, established to support no our to support our teachers. So um, it might as well be um, good to uh, for us teacher uh, for us uh, for for our school heads to also review you no know, th those policies you no know, the, the 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 policy on. Uh, the national adoption and implementation of the Philippine professional standards for teachers to be able to uh, properly okay, support you know, our teachers. Okay, so um, Deputy Order Number 42, Series of 2017, okay, was released. Okay, uh, was released to set out 
clear expectations of teachers along with well-defined career stages of professional development from beginning to distinguished practice. Okay? And then engage teachers to actively embrace a continuing effort in attaining proficiency and also apply measure to assess performance, okay? teacher performance, um, Okay. And the teacher performance, um, identify needs and provide support for professional development. So this afternoon we will be um, we will be discussing more on the Philippine professional standards for teachers um, and see and look into it as to how as school school head be able to support support our teachers in terms of focusing on learning on teaching and learning okay so um if uh, this uh, as a review there are seven domains you no know, under the philippine professional standards for teachers they, these are content knowledge and pedagogy learning environment diversity of learners curriculum and planning assessment and reporting and then also community linkages and professional engagement and the last one is professional growth and professional development okay so under under the first domain which is the content knowledge and pedagogy we have seven strands okay so the strand strand one point one is content knowledge and its application within and across curriculum areas okay strand two is research-based knowledge and principles of teaching and learning. Strand three is positive use of ICT. Um, strategies, strand four is strategies for promoting literacy and numeracy. And then um, strategies for developing critical and creative thinking as well as other higher order thinking skills. And then we have mother tongue, Filipino and English in teaching and learning. And then the last strand is classroom communication strategies. So this, um, um, the PPST, if you have read our manual for our PPST, um, this particular domain is summarized into this. So I have highlighted, you no, know, I have highlighted um, terms for us to remember, okay, to for us to remember and fully understand what this domain is really all about. Okay, so the content knowledge and figure is pedagogy is one of the core competencies of being a teacher. And we already know that pedagogy is the heart of our teaching. So under this domain, um, this recognizes the importance of teachers' mastery of content knowledge and its interconnectedness within and across curriculum areas. Okay, and then so from this term, interconnectedness within and across uh, across curriculum this will remind us of our one of the features of our k-12 which is the um, spiral progression or articulation so this means that learn that students learn concepts you no know, while where they are young or at the lower level and then they learn the same concept okay repeatedly the same concepts repeatedly at a higher degree of level okay to another so there is deepening in the application and context. So teachers should make sure that in preparing lessons, you know, learners are able to revisit previously encountered topics with an increasing level of complexity and that lessons build on, uh, okay, build on from previous learning. So there is like, for example, um, like the basic operations that they have learned in the lower grade level. Okay, and then the same basic mathematical operations were applied okay, when they reached grade 11 uh, and grade 12. Okay, but then um, the use of these basic operations okay, are much now complex. complex okay? So there is increase in depth okay, as to its application. Okay? So we also have our uh, horizontal integration in which um, um, you cross from one subject area to another uh, in the same at the same given time so so like for example when you learn um, the same no, the basic operations no uh, basic operations of addition subtraction multiplication the same we, we learn we use this concept in understanding um, 
some operations or some concepts that are taught in in um, in economics, no, in physics. Okay, so there is now um, horizontal um, uh, horizontal integration. Okay, we also learned all, we also have our vertical um, integration, which is there is deepening of concept within the subject um, over time. Okay, for example, this concept of motion when they have got motion with what they have learned in the lower years, example, in grade four, okay? So the concept okay, builds up as they go from higher, from this, from lower level to a higher grade level. So if, if they take um, general physics when they reach um, senior high school, so the concept of, of motion will now, will now be uh, much more complicated, okay? So then we also have the application um, areas coupled with sound and critical understanding on the application of theories and principles of teaching and learning. So um, teachers should at all times be able to um, apply all those theories and principles okay, of teaching and learning so that um, they would be able to teach, no, to teach and apply developmentally appropriate and many meaningful pedagogy okay grounded on content knowledge and research so when we say developmentally appropriate this refers to the practice of making a curriculum based on what students are able to do cognitively okay physically and emotionally at a certain age so what are those theories that that um that revolves around um uh, the application of developmentally appropriate um, content knowledge, okay? And then, when we say meaningful, meaningful, okay, this becomes, uh, our lesson becomes meaningful when it is contextualized. So it has, meaning it has useful application in the life of, a, of our learner, of a child. So when they're able to apply what they know, and then or they, uh, our learners are able to relate with what they are learning. Okay, so um, still one of the the um, features of our K to twelve curriculum is on contextualization. One of one of the one of the features is contextualization. And we already know that this is a educational process of relating curriculum to a particular setting situation or area of application to make the competencies relevant, meaningful, and useful to our, our learners. And this, uh, the degree of this contextualization is our, our can be further um, distinguished into local, localization, okay, which means, uh, which involves relating curriculum content to information and materials found in the learner's immediate community. Okay, and then we also have our indigenization, okay, which involves um, relating curriculum competencies, learning resources, and even in the instructional process in relating to the biograph biographical, um, biogeographical, historical, and sociocultural context of the learners in the community. Okay, so uh, this, all, the, this is also grounded um, on content knowledge and current research, okay? So it is also emphasized under domain that the teacher should take into account, it takes into account teacher's proficiency in the mother tongue, uh, in mother tongue, Filipino and language, okay? In teaching and learning process, okay? Um, we all know that under, uh, for K23, so there is a use of our mother tongue, so the, the, the logic behind this, uh, this behind this is that we let our we let the thinking skills you no know, be um, be developed first, um, and we know that the, the the language of thinking is our mother tongue. Okay, and then <clears throat> then we have um, as well as the need skill in the use of communication strategies. Okay, so communication strategies, teaching strategies, and technologies to promote highly quality learning outcomes. Okay, so um, when we say communication strategies, when we say communication, this is the exchange of my wor world of meaning with your world of meaning. So 
uh, in the communication, we have our sender, okay, our sender who communicates with the receiver of that message no, through a medium or through a channel. So the sender is the encoder of the message and the, while well, the receiver is the, the decoder of the message. And then it's the receiver who provides or sends the feedback okay, to our receiver. Okay, so the communication happens within the context. So um, they should take into account you know, the verbal and the nonverbal message that are being exchanged in this um, context. Okay, and then we also have the different teaching strategies, which I'll be um, discussing one by one later on or introduced later on. And then we have the technologies, the use of technologies, you no know, um, teaching strategies, the use of technologies okay so we have I'm, I'm sure that you're familiar with our um uh, when we use technologies we should be able to um use it in terms of uh, the content knowledge um pedagog pedagogical knowledge and the technology knowledge so i, I hope that um, everyone here is also familiar with our tpac frameworks or the technology pedagogy um, content knowledge model Okay. And then also, uh, also we have the technology integration matrix, okay, which enables us to, to maximize the use of technology in our classroom instruction. So when we say technology in instruction, uh, technology integration matrix, we have the entry, adoption, adaptation, infusion, and transformation. Okay, so and then we have the teaching strategies that are already that are that are um, discussed or introduced under Dep Order Number Forty Two. If these are the direct instruction, okay, which is a systematic structure and sequential sequential teaching. So its basic step steps include presenting the material, explaining and reinforcing it. So this this particular strategy strategy is used to teach facts, rules, and action sequences. Okay, so this involve this includes the comparing and contrasting, okay, demonstrations, didact providing or asking didactic questions, then or providing them with drills and practices, okay, or providing them with guides for reading, listening, and viewing, um, and also providing with lectures, okay, and others. Okay, another one that is introduced, okay is our indirect instruction so this is a this particular strategy is when the teacher when the learner is an active okay and not passive participant so the, this use the use of for concept learning this is used for concept learning inquiry learning and problem-centered learning so um, as teachers they should be able to provide our 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 learners with activities that that includes case study close procedure concept formation inquiry problem solving reflective discussion and others okay then we also have our experiential this uh, experiential instruction okay so this particular strategy strategy is when teaching at in is teaching that addresses learners needs to be active in their learning and interact with others. So this emphasizes the process and not the product of learning. So um, when using this particular strat uh, structure, teachers um, provide learners games, experiments, field, tri field trips, model building, field observations, role play, simulation, and others. Okay, then we also have our independent study so this involves um, this uh, this particular strategy is when um, teachers have external control uh, teachers external control is reduced okay and students interact more with the content okay so they should be uh, the aim of this is to develop leaders initiative self reliance and self improvement okay and include assigned questions uh, this particular strategy provides our uh, our students with assigned questions, correspondence lessons, 
computer assisted instructions, essay, homework, learning learning contracts, reports, research project, and others. Okay, so that are uh, what are being emphasized in under domain one. Okay, so under domain two of the PPST is uh, learning environment. So we have six trends. These are learner safety and security, fair learning environment, management of classroom structure and activities, support for learner participation, promotion of purposive learning, management of learning, uh, uh, management of learner behavior. Okay. In summary, um, uh, the PTSD manual summarizes it to be um, uh, that this domain highlights the role of teachers to provide learning environments. Okay, so we already know when, when pandemic happen, happen, we already know that our learning environments, okay, does not only mean, um, the um, a learning environment does not only mean physical environment, it also means um, virtual spaces. Okay, so when we say, um, uh, the, the con this concept is anchored on behaviorism, okay, theory okay, of Pavlov, okay, in which it discusses the role of the environment in the behavior of a child. Okay, and then when we say virtual spaces, okay, so this not only be necessarily online, but it's also be interactive. Okay, and then under this domain, it emphasizes you know, what char the characteristics of our learning environment. So, Okay, so under this domain, it describes or characterizes our learning environment as safe, secure, fair, and and it should support and supportive, you no, know, and supportive in order to promote learner responsibility and achievement. So um, this should be okay. So an environment that is safe, secure, fair, and supportive should be the kind of learning environment in which our teachers should be able to build you know, for their um, for their learners okay so this domain centers on creating environment that is learning focused so when they say learning focus it should be purposive and when they say purposive purposive um, this should be demonstrated by providing structured activities that uses Okay, a wide range of resources, a wide range of resources, okay, and then this particular, um, this learning activity should be intellectually challenging and, okay, um, stimulating, okay, for 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 uh, for this to be, um, to encourage you no know, constructive experience among our learners. Okay, so remember that. Um, in our what we want, you know, what we want our learners to be able to do, okay, our our very, uh, very, uh, very goal is uh, is for our students to be able to be able to create out of the knowledge that they will be learning, okay. So, which is why one of the features again of the K two twelve is constructivism. Um, teachers should provide learners with opportunities to organize or reorganize their teaching and construct knowledge that is meaningful to our learners. Okay, um, all of this, no, all of this, is related to classroom management. Okay, um, what what students should when we say classroom management, this is what we would want our students. To experience and what our teacher should be able to master. So we have to remember the three C's okay, in our classroom management. We have to manage the content, okay, manage the context, and also manage the conduct. Okay, so we say a well a well managed um, classroom should have good context, a uh, content which comes from the lessons, learning activities that are intellectually challenging and then intellect and stimulating, and then. Um, context, no. There should be direct applications, um, uh, applications to the lives of our learners, to making it ma making it meaningful and relevant, okay, and responsive to the society. And then um, conduct, okay, uh, conduct which is through um, discipline. 
Okay? So all of this geared are geared towards the attainment of high standards of learning. Okay? Now let's proceed to domain three, which is the diversity of learners. So there are five strands. Okay, so these are learners' gender needs, strengths, um, interests, and experiences, learners' linguistic, cultural, socioeconomic, and religious backgrounds, learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents, learners in difficult circumstances, and learners from indigenous groups. Okay, so this, um, this particular domain is anchored on respect, you know, celebration of the uniqueness and individuality of our learners. So this emphasizes the central role of teachers in establishing learning environments that are responsive to diversity. So when we say diversity, we have we, we have to acknowledge that we have diverse learners, you no know, learners of different they are they are of different gender, they have different needs. They have different strengths and experiences, okay? And then you also have to, to acknowledge and celebrate as well the, that our learners have, may have, you no, know, in the midst of, we say, in our classroom, there are others who are, who are, who are, who are maybe are using a different type of language, okay? They come from different culture, okay? Or different social, socioeconomic, okay? They are from a different religious or religion, okay, or they have of different um, of, of faith and beliefs, and then um, they are uh, learners that are that comes from um, indigenous people, okay, and then we also have to to also recognize you know, that there we have learners that are gifted, okay. Or they maybe are they are also differently able, no? And then of there are they have they possess different talents. Okay, so we also have to 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 also remember that our learners may have different IQ, EQ, AQ, and SQ. So um, before what we have already know is that. We have the IQ and EQ. Now, we have to consider also their EQ, AQ, and SQ. So IQ means the, the it's the uh, the uh, intelligent, intelligence quotient. No? We, have, we have we calculated this in terms of their mental age versus their chrono chronological age. Okay, and then we have the emotional quotient, um, self-awareness, um, and, uh, and then we also have the AQ, which is the adversity quotient, and the SQ is the ad spiritual quotient. So when they say ad ad adversity quotient, they were they are able to control control their their adversity, recognize the origin of these adversities, and then um, um, we sh we should also be able to to think of their reaction. Of these adversities and then their endurance uh, when it comes to these adversities. Okay, and then also have to consider the spiritual quotients. You know, of uh, when we say spiritual quotients, we have to to consider um, the, the universal values, which emphasizes on dignity, freedom, justice, and equality. Okay, so um, see, uh, still on the concept of of learner diversity, we have to also consider um, that our learners may have different, you know, are, we, are of of levels of, um, they maybe are of mon multiple intelligences, okay, so under Gardner's theory, and then of different learning styles. So meaning they are, they learn differently from others, others learn through visual, auditory, Okay, some of them are tactile or a combination of visual, auditory, and others. Okay, so because of this, we have to to respect, no, to, to respect the the correct the, the respect for uh, as teachers. Okay, um, they should be able to they should have knowledge and understanding 
of the ex of as well as re respect for our learners okay of diverse characteristics and experiences that i've mentioned okay and this serve this should serve as inputs to the planning and designing of the learning opportunities okay so um learning opportunities that uh, in which teachers should be able to differentiate okay teaching or instruction okay so teachers are encouraged to to differentiate differentiate their teaching in order to help different kinds of learners okay, meet okay the outcomes expected in each lesson okay so when i say differentiated or differentiate differentiation or differentiated instruction okay this means providing multiple learning options okay in the classroom so that learners of varying varying interests um, abilities and needs are able to take the same content appropriate to their needs okay um uh, teachers should be also be able to to employ cooperative learning so as one of the learning opportunities so when we say cooperative learning this involves structuring our classes around small groups that work together in such way that each group members success is dependent on the group success okay so under this um uh, under cooperative we will be able to to match our learners um this, in spite of their differences, we'll be able to group them. We are, we are we, uh, as learners, as teachers, they should be able to match learners, okay? And then, when they do this, they should be able to stretch, no? Um, stretch in such a way that they will be able to, to still, um, to, 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 to accept and then respect also their co-learners, no? Uh, respect and celebrate. The diversity, okay, and it, the the unique uniqueness and individuality of their uh, fellow learners, and then celebrate you know, uh, their that they should they should be able to work in group, okay, despite and in spite of the, in spite of their individual um, differences, experiences, uh, backgrounds, and others, okay. Um, all this you now should be able to encourage all learners to be successful citizens in the changing local and global environment okay and then let's proceed to domain four which is the curriculum and planning so we have five strands okay under which we have planning and management of teaching and learning process learning outcomes aligned with learning competencies relevance and responsiveness of learning programs professional collaboration collaboration to enrich teaching practice and then teaching and uh, teaching and learning resources included including IC. okay so the ppsd summarizes our domain for as this um we already know that when we say curriculum this is the sum or total of learning experience of a child okay of a child um not only in the classroom but also Okay, all other areas uh, where they are also learning. So this can be um, structured, prescribed, okay? Um, and then um, uh, this particular domain addresses teachers' knowledge of and interaction with the national curriculum requirements. Okay, so this domain encompasses their ability to translate curriculum content into learning activities. Okay, which are relevant to learners and is based on the principle of effective teaching and learning. So when we say learning activities, this should be um, based on a goal, which is a long-term goal, and this is broken down to, um, to objectives. You know, and these objectives are translated to become um, learning outcomes so to do this there should be there is a need for um, providing um, instruction and learning activities now when we say learning outcomes this refers to the change that occurred okay, from the, the the instructions that are given to our learners so this change is aligned with the competencies and values no uh, competencies and values and then um we already know that when we do the objectives, 
um, they should be in a smart form. And then um, smart form, we have the, the, it should be specific, measurable, um, attainable. Um, I forgot, R is resource based and then um, and time bounded. Okay, so and then um, when we say learning outcome, our learning outcome should also be specific, observable, and measurable, so that later on we will be able to to assess you now this this assess this learning outcomes. Okay, um, it expects teachers to apply their professional knowledge to plan and design individually in collaboration with colleagues, um, with uh, with colleagues well-structured and sequenced lessons. So um, um, sequence lessons. So this lessons, this these lessons, sequences, and associated learning program should be contextually relevant, responsive to learners' needs, and incorporate a range of teaching and learning resources. So um, from, from this statement, we know that teachers should be able to communicate this goal, the goals that, that are being set when when play planning, uh, planning a lesson, and that this goal, uh, so that after communicating, um, this goal gets the support okay, and the experience, you know, um, in the support that should be anchored on learner participation, um, learner participation, understanding and achievement so as mentioned curriculum should be contextually relevant and responsive okay so um i've already mentioned um earlier that we say uh, there should be application of learning it should be contextually um relevant and meaningful and also response uh, and also responsive okay and when we say responsive this this refers to the needs of the society in which we are preparing our learners okay um when we say less for uh, a teacher should be able to apply and design um individually or in collaboration with colleagues this comes in when we are able to to apply content knowledge across and within, okay, within um, curriculum content, okay. So when we when we plan, when we uh, when we do the planning, we consider um, design, okay. Um, from from which we bring down this design to um, structured and sequenced lessons so it should be well structured and sequenced lessons in which if you remember um we have the osleya um when we say osleya it means that we are we're, we are able to to identify um objectives in preparing in, when we when we prepare, prepare our lessons we, we make we made use of um the osleya structure so we have the objectives um subject matter learning activities Oslea, we have O, objective, S for subject matter, L is learning activities, okay, which incorporates um, a wide range of resources so that experience becomes worthwhile okay, and meaningful. Okay? So and when we say wide range of, of, of resources, this may include um, materials, okay, the four M, money, manpower, um, money, uh, machine, moment, Okay, and then Oslea, that's L, L is learning activities. Then we have the E, which is for evaluation. Okay, so we, we, we check for understanding. And then the A is for assignment, okay, to, to enrich. We provide our learners assignment to enrich their experiences. Okay, then we're down to... Uh, um, Domain five, which is assessment and reporting. We have five strands. We have design, selection, organization, and utilization of assessment strategies, monitoring and evaluation of learner progress and achievement, then feedback to improve learning, communication of learner needs, 
progress and achievement to key stakeholders use of assessment data to enhance um, to enhance teaching and learning practices and programs okay so this domain relates to processes associated with a variety of assessment tools and strategies used by teachers in monitoring evaluating documenting and reporting the learners needs progress and achievement um, the word assessment is usually is almost at all times associated with evaluation okay so when we say assessment you know, uh, to, to compare the two when we say assessment we we this assessment is process oriented and then when we say evaluation we, we um, evaluation is pro product oriented okay so for assessment we check how is learning taking place and then under evaluation we ask what has been learned okay and then for assessment Okay, we make use of data and information, and when we do evaluation, we provide the judgment. Okay, and then under assessment, we also we 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 do qualitative analysis, and then for evaluation, we do quantitative analysis. For assessment, we check for the strengths and weaknesses of our learners. And then under evaluation, we sort and we sort and rank our learners. And then for assessment, we, we do diagnostics. Okay, so what are their needs? How, how are they prog progressing? Okay, and our lessons. And then for um, for evaluation, we do the, the summative assessment. Uh, we do the summative. Okay, we we, we evaluate them on their um, we we evaluate them on their learning. Okay, so when we do assessment, okay, the, the teacher should be able to use variety of assessment tools and strategies. Okay, with this variety, so there's a variety of of um, assessment tools and strategies. So a teacher should be able to to, org to select, organize, and use, okay, to be able to use a sound um, assessment, okay? So when we say select, um, what are those assessment tools or strategies? Um, we, we think of um, those traditional assessments. We have the paper pencil tests, um, alternative assessment. We have the performance product or or portfolio, and then for authentic assessments, these are the real-life applications. Okay, so as mentioned, um, assessment has something to do with data. So um, the, the, this domain concerns the use of assessment data in a variety of ways to inform and enhance the teaching and learning process and programs. So um, what we do with the, the assessment data is we where, where we organize uh, the data, Okay, and this organized data becomes our information, and then we we communicate this through reporting. Okay, so when we say organized, it also includes documentation of documentation of our uh, documentation of the process of utilizing the assessment tools and strategies. Okay, and what we do report is. Um, um, the, the learners needs progress and achievement no um, to uh, the uh, report the learners needs progress and an achievement okay and then from here um, the, the the teacher should be able to provide okay with all this data with this all with all this assessment data the, the teacher should be able to provide the necessary feedback okay about the learning outcomes and this this feedback informs the reporting cycle and then enables to again teachers to select organize and use sound assessment processes okay so the the the, the result of this should be able it should be an again an input to the planning uh, the, to to the planning of uh, to the planning um, planning and curriculum and 
planning of our teachers. Okay, and then let's go to domain six, which is the community linkages and professional engagement. So we have four strands. Okay, these are establishment of learning environments that are responsive responsive to community context, engagements of parents and the wider school community in the educative process, professional ethics and school policies and procedures. Okay, um, the domain six affair affirms the role of teachers in establishing school community partnerships aimed at enriching the learning environment, as well as the community's engagement in the educa educative process. So this domain expects this domain expects teachers to identify and respond to opportunities that link teaching and learning in the classroom to the experiences interest, aspiration of the wider school community and other key um, stakeholders, okay, and it concerns the importance of teachers understanding and fulfilling their obligations, upholding um, professional ethics, accountability, and transparency um, to promote professional and harmonious relationship with learners okay so with learners parents schools and wider community so um what are those highlighted words we have the establishment of school community partnerships okay so um teachers should be able to able to to um to link you not know, uh link teaching and learning with with the community okay the aim here is to enrich the learning environment, um, so in learning environment, in such a way that the learning environment would be con con connected with the community. Okay, making the making um, the lessons um, relevant, meaningful, and responsive to the needs of the community. Um, what else? Um, in the classroom to experience interest and aspirations of the wider community. Then we also have to highlight it here also is the fulfilling of the obligations of the teachers in, in, in upholding professional ethics, accountability, and transparency. So um, we have, uh, we, uh, we, I think we need to, to remember that, that uh, under PD, 106 no and professional professional engagement um when we say professional okay this is a matter of privilege in which um um in which um we have to be also when we say privilege we also have to fulfill this the, the obligation that comes with it with that comes with it okay so we have to hold our professional ethics, okay, and then we have to make sure that we um, we fulfill our obligations in terms of accountability and transpar transparency. So um, we have a code for professional ethics, no, um, uh, which emph give, which emphasizes on the dignity, reputation, okay, high moral conduct, okay, as well as the commitment for competence. No, as teachers, and then when we say accountability, this comes with also with the liability, and we already know that there are three types of liability. We have the administrative, civil, and criminal. And then when we say transparency, okay, in um, transparency, to promote professional and harmonious relationship with learners, parents, teachers, and the wider community. Okay, and then the last domain is the professional growth and professional development. So we have five strands for this. Okay, we have uh, philosophy of teaching, dignity of teaching as a profession, professional links with colleagues, um, professional reflection and teach learning to improve practice, and then professional development goals. Okay, um, this domain focuses on 
uh, teachers professional growth and professional development. So this particular domain give values, uh, gave uh, gives value on the professional growth and professional development of teachers. So which is why here in the Human Resource Development Division, we make sure we facilitate um, professional development programs that are CPD accredited. Okay, so um, when I say CPD, this is continuing professional development, okay, which is um, mandated under Republic Act 10 912, okay, which was released in 2016. And we know that um, there's a re certain requirements for us to, re to, when we certain required units, CPD units for us to, to be able to renew our licenses. Okay, so we have to make sure that we gain a minimum of 15 units per year or 45 units okay, in three years for us to be able to renew our licenses. Okay, so more than that, more than, uh, more than, um, more than a compliance to, to this um, required CPD units is that, um, um, we, we are doing this because uh, the Philippines is part of the ASEAN, okay, and then there's a such thing, there's such thing as ASEAN um, Economic Cooperation, which, or the AEC, in which um, this that does not only involve economic, uh, economic, economic, but also uh, on the aspects of providing professional development to its human resources, okay? So under this economic um, cooperation, ASEAN economic cooperation, okay, there is the ASEAN qualification reference framework, okay, in which the Philippines qualification framework is anchored, uh, is anchoring on. We have the PQF, which is the Philippine qualification framework. You no, know, we have different levels of this in our um, in, in the professional, um, in the CPD uh, professional development programs, okay, under which, you no, know, um, under which we have the, um, in which once you are able, once you are, you are provided with this professional development um, programs, and in, in which um, this has increased your professional qualification um, being a member of this ASEAN organization okay our professional qualifications are being recognized with other ASEAN uh, ASEAN countries okay because of the ASEAN um, ASEAN mutual recognition arrangement okay so in, uh, this means that the professional qualifications that we are that we have here in the Philippines are recognized in other ASEAN countries. The same thing that the professionals okay, from this uh, from these other ASEAN countries are recognized here in the Philippines. Okay, um, so another is it accentuates. So we value on the personal prof personal professional growth. This accentuates teachers' proper and high personal regard. For the profession, by maintaining qualified qualities that uphold the dignity of teaching, such as caring attitude, respect, and integrity. Okay, so um, this domain values personal and professional reflection and learning to improve practice. So when you say personal and reflect, personal, personal and professional reflection, okay, there a teacher should be able to do reflection, okay, on his or her action, or if, while while doing while doing the teaching, or while performing his or her um, duties and responsibilities. Okay, and then um, re uh, by reflecting on this, they should be able to identify what needs to be improved, what needs to be continued, okay, and what needs to be enhanced. Okay, so according to the COBE adult learning model. Okay, we have we, we we reflect on our experiences, no? From our experiences, we, we reflect we we reflect on this, okay? And then we make use of our valuing skills to be able to identify, okay, the good, um, what needs to the, what needs to be improved, okay, on that particular experience, okay? And then when we do reflection, 
okay we we make use of our thinking skills okay and then um we theorize okay by by, by recognizing what are those things that needs to be improved okay what needs to be what needs to be added to a particular um, actions or while performing our duties and uh, our duties and responsibilities what needs to be improved so we make a theory and then from there we make uh, we we do experimentations if what we what we theorized would be able to improve our practice no and then from there okay we we up on it and then again we we make use of the same cycle of our uh, of our reflection uh, the same cycle from our experience we reflect on it we prove we theorize and then we experiment and then we assess okay in such a way that we'll be able to improve our practice okay and in such a way that we uh, that our teachers Okay, are being able to uphold, will be able to uphold the dignity of teachings, such as a caring attitude, there's a respect, and there is integrity. Okay, and then um, it recognizes the importance of teachers in assuming responsibility for uh, personal growth and development for lifelong learning. So, teach there. Uh, I have to emphasize on the word importance of teachers assuming responsibility for personal growth and development so a teacher should be able to reflect also on on his or her personal growth and professional development so by which a teacher should be able to identify what sorts of learning he or she needs to 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 um to um to to pursue okay so they are we have um formal learning the non-formal and the informal so when they say formal these are those that are that are structured so they, they may go for um higher educational um educational programs such as master's degree um doctoral doctorate degree and then we have the non-formal they should be able to identify what are their uh, their needs no and then address this uh, through, through recognizing what they need they were able to identify or select from the wide range of professional programs that are 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 present they would be able to attend trainings that would enhance um what particular competency they, they lack or they need to improve then they also have um the informal these are the the life the skills that they that are learned okay not in a a, a um formal or informal non-formal setting okay so but then they have they also have to to check okay that this should be uh, this particular learning or informal learning should be able should be recognized okay through the prc as to the prc okay uh, when i say recognize this particular uh, particular learning should be be validated no um, learning or skills should be validated um through assessment okay and then from there they should be able to from what if they, they uh, this assessment uh, after undergoing the assessment okay if indeed uh, the teacher has gained that particular skill or learning they should be they will be, be given a a they, they will be given accreditation okay mm -hmm. so that's all for domain seven so as a as a school head uh, school heads we should be able to um be familiarized we should be fami be familiarized with all those seven domains in such a way that we will be able to support our teachers and provide okay instructional supervision okay so um instructional supervision is defined as a professional continuous and cooperative process for the improvement of instruction. So this is characterized by guidance, assistance, sharing of ideas, facilitation or creation to help teachers improve 
learning situation and quality of learning in the school. So it is a hand holding for a professional colleague by instructional leaders, okay, that's you, the school heads, who possesses superior knowledge and skills and who work collaboratively in a school environment that nurtures the development of professional learning community. Okay, so this um, definition is taken from the instructional supervision standards, procedures, and tools. Um, okay, tools from the basic education reform agenda, teacher education, um, and development. Or Okay, develop. Okay. Um, these are the duties and responsibilities of instructional leaders. Okay, so our, the basic function is to improve support for teachers' professional growth and development in the improvement of teaching, learning, teaching, learning, and learning outcomes. Okay, so these are the areas of support that should be given to the teachers. Okay, so first is instructional support for teacher effectiveness and efficiency. So to be able to be uh, successful for, for us, uh, instructional supervision to be successful, a, a, a school head should assume leadership and supervises teachers on the improvement on, of instructional programs, especially specifically the teaching learning process. So which is why, as mentioned, you should have um, superior as uh, the support should be given by a um, by someone who possesses a superior knowledge and skills okay so to be able to do that you should be able to be familiar with with all those uh, with the teaching and learning processes okay and then motivates and support teachers to attain peak performance okay and then assess, assist teachers in identifying strengths and growth areas through monitoring and evaluation and then provides professional teaching and provide provides professional technical and instructional assistance to teachers and school heads uh, um, promotes for fellow school heads promotes adapted programs and projects to improve teaching and learning promotes the efficiency and teaching and learning in all classes through observation and visitation, and then evaluates performance of teachers, okay? And then another area of support for instructional supervision is um, through teacher capacity building, okay? We have we, um, organized seminars, workshops, and other in-service training programs, conduct similar programs and other services, services training programs, serves as consultant, and or resource person in in service uh, in service training institutional service trainings or insets initiates action research design to improve instruction and academic performance conduct action research design to improve instruction and academic performance then we also have another area of support okay um which is the curricular curricular enhancement Okay, we have an implement, uh, implement, support, implement, supports, uh, monitors, supervises, and assesses the school curriculum to assure higher learning outcomes, evaluate learning outcomes, vis-a-vis -vis the curriculum, recommend, recommends changes in the policies affecting curriculum and instruction, localizes, indigenizes um, curriculum, develops and promotes innovative and effective teaching learning, approaches approaches strategies and techniques um, proposes innovations to improve instruction implements innovative and alternative delivery schemes in teaching and learning and then acts as consultants okay and then another area of support that should be given is assessment of learning he undertakes periodic evaluation of learning achievement as the basis for inset and curriculum adaptation assist ensure Utilization of a range of assessment processes of learners' performance leads in the evaluation of learner achievement and utilizes results to improve learning, evaluates um, learning outcomes vis-a-vis -vis the curriculum, develops, promotes, and 
innovative and effective assessment approaches, strategies, and techniques, and then assist teachers in identifying strengths and growth areas through monitoring and observation. Okay. Um, um, another another task, another um, function, or another um, duties of a, of a school head is to be able to provide professional feedback. Okay, and we define professional feedback as an ongoing process between a teacher and a school head where information concerning the performance expected and performance exhibited or demonstration demonstrated is exchanged. Okay, and then there are two types of feedback. Okay, we have the reinforce and redirect. Okay, from the word reinforce. Okay, so the 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 school head should be able to identify. Okay, job-related behavior and performance okay, that contributes to the individual group and individual group and organizational goals. Okay, and then encourage the teacher to report, to repeat and develop this um, identified behaviors. Okay, and then another one, another type is redirect. So this type of feedback in identifies job-related behavior and performance that do not contribute to um, individual group individual group and organizational goals and helps the teacher develop alternate alternative strategies so um, when providing feedback um, we should be able also to to make sure that um, we, we, we uh, the use of a um, a a language that is not hurtful, okay, it should be constructive, um, construct, constructive feedback, okay? So when is feedback effective, okay, it is effective when it is specific. So uh, the, the, the school head should be able to tell the, the teacher, okay, what they did or did not accomplish, okay, and then how they completed their task and how effective if their actions are okay so it is also effective when it is given um even it is given uh given right away okay the teacher at the school should be able to give a timely feedback okay this is this is in order to reinforce positive actions or provide alternative suggestions early enough that the teacher can adjust and enhance his or her performance okay and then uh, feedback is also effective when it is balanced, okay? highlighting um, the strength and areas of improvement of our teacher. Okay? Then when providing feedback, one model that is um, used is the, through the STAR um, feedback model. Okay? So this helps your teacher focus their attention on behaviors. Um, uh, it, this helps the school head focus um, the teacher's attention on the behaviors that got them to their current level of performance. Okay, this can be used to reinforce teachers' good performance as well as to facilitate improvement on teachers' performance, and can be used to give feedback verbally or in writing. So when we say star feedback, I think all of you are already familiar with this. When we say star, it means the s &T represents situation or tasks. Okay, so under which this provides the context okay, for a teacher's actions. So they are, the, the, the school head should be able to describe specific event, okay, a specific job, okay, or assignment or warranted a response. Okay. And then after that, okay, there should be um, the, 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 the school unit should be able to note a particular action. Okay. This is the specific response of a teacher to the situation or task. So the teacher, the, the school child should be able to, to identify what action um, that the teacher, um, teacher employed to address the particular situation or task. So this answers what teacher said or did. Okay, it could be a multiple actions. Could be um, can be multiple actions. Can also be um, non actions. Okay, and then from this action, what are the results? Okay, so this could be okay. What happened um, due to the teacher's action or non action? 
A, is, is the action effective or ineffective? And then it can be, um, the result can be concrete. So there there should be a written, uh, can be concrete. This, this can be in a form of a written report or written feedback from colleagues okay, and others. And then it, can, it should be, can be less tangible. Okay, this could be a, it can be an example here is a result of low morale, misunderstanding, okay, and others. Okay, and then we have extended this to star AR feedback model. So we say standard star AR feedback model is used for developmental or performance improvement, while alternative action and results are described. So we have. Um, we have we should be able to provide um, teachers with alternate actions okay um, basing on the result so what can be done better or differently next time or we can also provide uh, and then provide uh, for us to be able to, to check or to anticipate alternative results so what could be the probable result or impact of the alternate action okay um that ends my presentation i hope that you were you are able to um get something out of my presentation um and i'm i'm wishing everyone a um uh, i'm wishing everyone a a fruitful um fruitful uh i'm sorry a fruitful and aging, um, a fruitful, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I hope that what I, have, what I have delivered, they will be able to come up and then find all of, some of my, some or all of my presentation useful and will be able to help them in their next endeavor, endeavor, endeavor which is taking the English. Thank you so much and good afternoon everyone. Sir Warren, I'm turning the microphone back to you. Thank you for everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Marlene Villarreal, for sharing to everyone your expertise.